The goal of this short video is to just uh, accompany our last video and our analysis of the bone density data. I wanted to give you a sense of how to read that data into R, where to find it, and to take a look at quickly uh, polynomial regression, which I mentioned in the last uh, video or two, and then uh, just a brief note on the k-smooth function, which will allow us to implement uh, the kernel estimator. So as you see here, uh, here's a description of the bone density data. You are able to uh, find this data in this package here. Um, this package, I believe, is for uh, a, a well-known statistical learning textbook. And um, so, so read the data in here. Um, in this notebook, I'm just going through uh, some of the procedures that we went through in a previous video. And I want to mention something about uh, polynomial regression. We implemented this a bit on a previous homework assignment, but just to be clear on how you would do it, uh, you could use the LM function and you would add in higher order terms of your uh, predictor using this I wrapper. So I parentheses age squared or age cubed, etc. And so I mentioned in the video these two different methods for trying to choose uh, polynomial terms to keep in your model. One method was to start at the degree of the polynomial equal to 1, so actually eliminating this as a predictor and just use age. And if we do that, we see that age is um, significant. And when we add in the squared term, in this summary, we notice that the squared term is not significant. So that first method where we start at d equals 1 and then we add until we lose significance, there's no real statistical justification for this sort of method, and we notice that it tells us to leave out uh, the squared term. Now that's going to be in, in contrast to the method where we start with higher order terms and we remove. So I think I started at uh, a fifth uh, degree five polynomial and that was not significant and when I took that away I got a degree four and all of these terms are significant so the second method would suggest that we use this degree four polynomial the first method would suggest just simple linear regression and given the fact that there's no you know rigorous um, statistical justification for finding the true relationship based on either of those methods, I'm not really in favor of using either, and I would be more in favor of a non-parametric regression model, which would, again, learn the shape of f uh, from the data. So here's just a plot of the, of the degree 4 polynomial, which I showed you in the notes, and, you know, it seems to do a reasonable job, but how would you uh, replicate this process with higher dimensional data, and um, it, it just doesn't seem too plausible. So that was our residual plot, and here is uh, just a, a, a fit using uh, the k-smooth function, so a kernel estimation procedure. So notice up here, I'll make this a little bit bigger, I have um, this k-smooth function. It's taking in our x values, in this case the, the age predictor, the y value, in this case the bone density measurement. Here we're specifying the type of kernel, and here I'm specifying the bandwidth. And then uh, I call that z, and in order to plot, here I'm just using base r plots. It was a bit easier than using ggplot in this case. I plotted uh, the relationship y um, tilde x. I'm specifying the data set. Here I'm just doing a few things to make the plot look a bit nicer. Um, these are making the points instead of open circles, they're making it dots. Uh, this term here is choosing like the size of the some of the features. Um, this here is making my points gray and this point 0.9 is making them a little bit uh, less bold, a little bit more transparent. And then the black uh, curve comes from this lines function, which is overlaying 
uh, our smooth on top of our our points. And notice, you know, this bandwidth term we talked uh, about in the previous video. And remember that it was making the curve either smoother or more rough. So if we made this something small, we should see something that's much more rough. And if we made it something larger, we would see something much more smooth. So again, it's a bit subjective, it's sort of an art to, to decide on the right bandwidth because it does make such a difference. And we had a discussion in the previous lesson about um, you know, some of those considerations.